Um, uh, the reason why I wanted to, you know, spend a little bit more time here uh, on top of what was already recorded in the previous session, I noticed that even those who may have some experience at work, they sort of still miss out what a metric is. Okay, and and typically metrics are. Are, are broad or they're not really metrics at all. They don't really describe what uh, what the goal is. But just to review, okay, so a business metric uh, is a measure of the degree to which a goal is achieved. Okay, Now, typically, this goal is a business goal. So if you have a business metric, the goal that is being measured against is a business goal. Now, Definitely, there will be other types of metrics according to the four views. So you probably would have a functional metric. You'd probably have a technical metric or an implementation metric. Now, an implementation metric, this would be similar to what you would have encountered in your typical project management uh, course or any project management framework. Uh, normally, you would check uh, metrics such as cost uh, or, or schedule. Now you have those SPIs, uh, CPIs, uh, just to give an example. You can also measure risks. But of course, risks, as you would have noticed, would be, would be applicable to almost all of the four views. But nevertheless, when we think of a metric, whether if it's a business metric or otherwise, it always has to be attached to a goal. And the, the further question is, what is supposed to be measured about that goal in order for you to determine whether you've accomplished your goal or not. Okay. And it has to be a clearly measurable test. Okay. Uh, it's something that is not subjective. Okay. Of course, there are instruments that would try to take, take a subject, subjective measure. For example, pulse surveys, normally they're subjective. Uh, but uh, as much as possible, you want to have a metric that is... Uh, objective, uh, something that's a little bit more stable across time. Because if you have something that is uh, subjective, you will notice that things can change over time. For example, if you're trying to measure preferences, preferences can change over time. Although there might be some number that we can get from that instrument or from that survey, uh, which is still uh, an acceptable, uh, measurable thing, Okay. Nevertheless, uh, it can be very difficult to, to rely on you know, if you're looking for something that's more stable or more or more reliable or more consistent. You'd probably would want to choose a metric that is uh, observable, okay, and typically uh, or rarely non-contestable or rarely contestable. No? You don't want it to be contestable all the time, okay. And metrics are useful, as, as we know, in, in, in not just in solution architecture, but in all facets of our work. Uh, having that metric mindset is also important. Of course, there's that danger of becoming too excessively metric-minded, okay, that you fail to appreciate other measures that are equally important, or maybe non-measures, things that are intangible, that obviously there's no clear way to measure it right uh, and this would perhaps be in the purview of of ethical realities no so naturally while metrics are good in themselves if you really want to determine how close you are to accomplishing a goal okay, it is not the end all be all of every decision making okay? you always have to look at the bigger picture or what the literature would say nowadays as frame. So what frame do we really want to use? Okay, And sometimes the frame has to be broadened a little bit more so that you can actually tackle other issues that may not be big, but if you ignore them, then they could become crisis in the future. Anyway, uh, I'm digressing. No? But, but for metric, the, the key idea is that number one, it has to be attached or related to a goal that you really want to measure or, or monitor. Uh, 
And second, it has to be something that can be measured, uh, preferably something that is objective okay, rather than something subjective. Okay. So these are uh, broad categories. Now, there are, these are not metrics in themselves. Okay. So I've seen students or participants, when you ask them for metrics, okay, like in our example, uh, sometimes they're looking at, or they just put time or range. I would typically ask them, what about time? Is it turnaround time? Is it production time? Is it resolution time? Is it delivery time? You can still be more specific because if you look at time, yes, it's something that's measurable, but what's the goal, right? And that's something that you really want to, to look into. Or what about range? Range, okay, some, some participants would answer, okay, uh, range, I like to use range as a metric. Okay, but what about range? Okay, uh, you, you need to be more specific here. So it says here the breadth of range that can be supported or introduced. So are we looking at the number of features changed? Are we looking at what specifically about range? So you can now see that sometimes when we see these things, uh, time, range, and ease in this example uh, are just categories. They're not really metrics in themselves. And there's really no, uh, should we say, recipe to say that this is a correct metric or this is not a, a correct metric. For sure, your litmus test to, to determine whether a metric is good or not is if it can really truly measure the goal that you want to monitor. No? Okay, so there are other metrics here. Okay, again, these are categories, as you see in front of you. Availability, what about availability? Okay. So what, what specific uh, measure? Okay, so now you know that these are just categories, but you understand that, okay, you can probably pigeonhole yourself in one of the categories. So the next question is, what about uh, in that category? What is it about that category that you really like to determine? Okay. So when you say cost, okay, cost, I want to measure cost. That's a metric. Okay, what about cost? Are you looking at total cost? Are you looking at labor cost? Are you looking at what type of cost? And you can even drill that out on further according to a specific period of time. Labor cost per quarter, labor cost in a fiscal year, labor cost in a week, in a day. Okay. So, so definitely when we're trying to determine metrics, it's important to be specific. Uh, of course, you will get to understand that if you become too specific and people are excessively focused on that specific metric, then you tend to lose out the bigger picture, which is also what you want to avoid. Now, obviously, the countermeasure to avoid excessive focus, you'd want to have many metrics, but definitely that's also cumbersome for the one who monitors. Because if you have like 100 metrics, you really can't make heads or tails out of the 100 metrics unless you really have a very good holistic monitoring framework, for example. But even then, monitoring 100 per se is, is not convenient at the very least. Okay? And instead of giving you guys a little bit of focus, you might be a little bit more distracted because you have many metrics to consider. So the guideline... Typically, in the same way as you don't want to have too many goals, you also don't want to have too many metrics to measure. Okay, so these are other examples of categories uh, of metrics for risks. Okay, so some students or participants, uh, they look at mitigation factors. Okay, I'm going to, my metric will be mitigation factors. Okay, what about it? Okay, so you want to measure, uh, what is it about mitig mitigation factors that you want to observe and measure? Okay. So is it the number of times of failure? Is it the number of times of, of what specifically, right? If you find yourself having to ask further questions to clarify what you mean by your answer to that question about metrics, then it's typically a sign that you don't really have a good metric to begin with. And return on IT investments, uh, so on and so forth. 